happen. Hey, my name's Eric. Some uh, audio alchemy questions for... Okay, the first question I'm going to ask him is, uh, what is your earliest memory of using cassettes? What do you do with them now? How did you get started? Um, for my birthday in the seventh grade, I was given a clock radio cassette player combination with a microphone. And uh, uh, some of my earliest recording projects uh, were with trash cans and, uh, and voice in seventh grade. I can remember several uh, short tunes we did. Uh, one of the most memorable was a uh, song called Boogie Woogie Flats that we did with trash cans in seventh grade. some of the best ideas you have heard for using cassettes? Well, <clears throat> um, one of the, my favorite things that I ever did with cassettes was um, I prepared uh, for a performance called The Drought in Seattle and about three years ago. I prepared a number of cassettes um, of a kind of a phasing synthesizer piece um, and I copied all the cassettes on the same machine so they were all at the same speed and then people were supposed to bring cassette players for the um, performance and at the end of the performance um, I, everybody in the audience and the performers held on to this long rope and this was on the fourth floor and we walked our way downstairs and then uh, my friend David and I climbed up the fire escape and tie, tie the uh, cassette recorders to it. And all, all these cheap cassette recorders play at different speeds. So these tapes were kind of, uh, one was a little bit off from the next, and the next, and the next. And the night it worked best, we had uh, 10 tape recorders dangling from the fire escape. <laughs> Sounded good. Sounded very good. What are the worst ideas you've heard for using cassettes? Uh, the worst idea for using cassettes. Um, I don't know. I think the, the worst idea for using cassettes is to uh, make them so that people can't record on them or have to pay a huge fee to. Do you have any comments about the technology surrounding cassettes? Well, yeah, I, I think the uh, cassette technology can be uh, extremely liberating. Um, the frustrating thing is that the uh, powers that be are, are trying to uh, make it so that people who do home taping and do their own recording are, are shut out. As it is, they don't have much of a voice anyway. I don't see what there is to worry about, but um, they basically want to make it pay and want to make it pay real well. Um, that, that's the biggest danger that I see. Who has produced outstanding cassette creations and utilizations? Um, I really like Don Compal's work in uh, San Jose. Uh, I'm working with a friend, Michael Torrey, who is uh, in Santa Cruz, who's done some real good stuff on cassette. Uh, there's a fellow named David Myers in uh, New York City who is, I don't know if you're familiar with this, music at all. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice stuff. Very, very well produced. My cassettes are very fine. Uh, oh, uh, while you're at it, you want to give out an address? Sure. Um, I have a new address. Hmm. Uh, it's 2340A Capitola Road, Santa Cruz, 95062. Why? Would I, I take that as, yeah, your house is on fire. You can grab one box of ten tapes. Which ones are they? Um, I think there would be uh, master tapes of some of uh, 
my electronic music because that stuff I could not possibly get anywhere else in the world. God, I don't remember. I think my earliest recollection of using cassettes was uh, in music school. We used, to, we used to have to buy these cassettes for ear training, and they were so boring, man. It was like really, we used to have to sit in the studio and over and over for hours. So that's what I remember my first experience. That was in 1973. And what are some of the best ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Some of the best ideas. Um, I think the uh, cassette magazines are interesting, and I like a lot of the packaging that uh, that happens with home tapers. I think that's an interesting concept about cassette as a package. What are the worst ideas you have heard for using cassettes? I'm playing some of them tonight. Do you have any comments about legalities regarding home taping? Absolutely. Well, I. Um, I think that all home taping, I think all cassettes should be free, it should be a free medium, I mean, as far as, like, tax being applied and, you know, all this copyright, you know, bunk is just that, it's just trying to make the record companies richer, that's all. There's, there's nothing that's going to make Prince starve because I'm taping his record. Who has produced outstanding cassette creations and utilizations? What did they do? Um, That's a really hard question. I, I'd have to say that one of my favorites, of course, is the Haters. Um, of course, Big C. Some of the stuff you guys have done is, rightly is really nice, really nice. I like the graphics and the music. And let's see, who else? I don't get a whole lot that's, that's super interesting. I think the first thing I look for is inventive packaging, because I think that shows the, uh, you know, the creativity of the person, at least on a visual level, and then, you know, audio-wise, you know, it's either good or bad, but that's what I look for. I don't know. I'd have to say the haters in the big city. Office. Do you have any comments about the technology surrounding cassettes? Yeah, I can't wait till uh, RDAT comes out. I mean, that's, that's going to be, I mean, everybody's going to have access to, like, super clean, uh, very high technology at a affordable price within five years. And uh, that's going to super, I mean, audio analog cassettes will be a thing of the past. What I'd like to see is the RDATs uh, use standard cassette format. I think that would be really nice. That way we don't have to throw away all our old cassettes. Supposedly the DACs are already released in Japan at this time. Right, I've seen the picture of the Sony, the portable mm -hmm. RDAT. It's beautiful. What are the most precious cassettes in your collection? <laughs> Um, I'd have to say, let's see, some of the work that David Jackman has done, um, and stuff he's done with a guy named Andrew Chalk, I'd have to say are some of the nicer things I have. And they're, and they're gifts, so that makes them extra special to me. Double nice. Yeah. Okay, I'm Joe Hartling of, uh, Architect's Office and his Andy's Dad Trade Journal. My address is 550 College Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. My phone number is 303-443-3880. Okay. What do you do with cassettes? How did you get started? What I do with cassettes is uh, record on them and decorate them, package them, and sell them and give them away, trade them, and so forth. Um, started as part of uh, being with friends and so forth as a very young kid we used to do, we would do radio plays these kinds of things a uh, long time ago of course um, used to make tapes of practically anything that interested us we would sneak it into movie theaters um, that was one way to, that I got started what are some of the best ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Oh, um, I think they're very good for, uh, well, I think the Magnifics dot uh, work in Russia is probably the, 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 one, of the, one of the best ideas I've heard. Uh, particularly in, in that nation under those conditions, I think that's really perfect. What are the worst ideas you've heard? 
Well, I think demo tapes and mailing them around too much to people that don't care about them and then they record over them. I think that's a very bad use of a cassette. Uh, it's re-recording over something that's already on the tape. Okay. Who is outstanding in cassette creations and what have they done? Well, I think uh, there's the there's a lot of people that aren't doing it anymore that, that are very good. Um, I think there's a very interesting pockets of activity in parts of France and in, uh, in Belgium and so forth. I guess I don't want to name names, but to me it's a matter of, of packaging and content. Uh, the balance of the two and, I don't know, some richness uh, in some richness in both packaging and content, I think, is, is important and actually uh, very, uh, sort of very, uh, has a special potential in the cassette format somehow. What are your favorite cassettes? Favorite cassettes are. Uh, uh, without naming names. Uh, Name for, names. Uh, favorite cassettes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> My very favorite cassettes. Uh, well, I don't know. It seems like a lot of the groups that have cassette-only type releases or even other groups that are, that are on LP and so forth, they tend to they tend to be, you know, unusual on cassette. And uh, so practically anybody that would do a cassette only release is gonna it's gonna be something that I would consider favorite I, I don't know uh, how to qualify it except for that um, making a cassette seems to be less of a less of a economic consideration than making an LP for example so they can do sort of more of the thing they feel like doing and want to do so forth, and uh, that's, that answers that. Uh, why some of these? Why some of these cassettes are my favorites, as opposed to other ones? Uh, I guess um, I, I'll try and provide some of those somehow uh, along the way. Um, I like uh, the use of interesting material in packaging a cassette. I like uh, a good integration, aesthetically, or an integration of, of anything relating to the tape should somehow be self-contained and not, and not so much uh, two, ex two external things, but rather one integrated unit. And there are, some, there are a lot of tape packages like that, and those are the better ones, I think. Um, just from what I've seen of the way people store tapes and so forth, uh, which is an interesting thing. I would have a comment about the way people store tapes. Uh, I've seen, I think, Bill and Tamara put their tapes up real nice. They have a, uh, they have a format where, uh, they have a format where, where they, um, they set it, they set them up so that they're hard to file through, but at least they're not separated. Like Paul Dickerson separates his tapes from his booklets and so forth, and because he he's real heavily into this. Well, I think that that's a terrible use of cassettes is to try and force them into some kind of a mold of how you store them. Like I've seen a lot of people that store their tapes in, in a way that I don't know where it's where you don't realize that a booklet came with it or something like that. Well, anyway, if, they, if you, that problem goes on and on, but. Oh, uh, about the legalities regarding home taping. Um, well, I think that I think there's I think somebody should do a study and for the for the Cassette Mythos Project, some kind of a lawyer maybe could could uh, could donate his time and, and find out what the landmark cases are because this uh, looking in uh, law journals and. And, uh, and court reports is really not very tricky. In fact, it's really easy to find stuff once you get used to the way that things are 
systematically catalog as well. I think definitely it'd be very good to have some idea how the definitions are made and uh, and, and what constitutes what just in, in the very loosest senses, just so the people know what they're doing. I, I think bootlegging, by the way, is a bad use of cassettes. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> Boot bootlegging that is for cash and not for trade. For trade seems to be okay. But... This time for sure. Okay, go on and say who you are, what your affiliation is. I'm MK, I run Bam Productions. What do you do with cassettes? I encase cassettes in plastic, metal, wood, paper, paint, etc. How did you what do you do with cassettes? I encase them in paper, plastic, metal, wood, paint, etc. What are some of the best ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Encasing them in paper, plastic, metal, wood, paint, etc. What are the worst ideas you've heard for using cassettes? Encasing them in a plastic shell. Jeez, I've heard these questions somewhere before. Who is outstanding in cassette creations and what have they done? People that have encased them in paper, plastic, metal, wood, paint, etc. Do you have any comments about legalities regarding home taping? No. Do you have any observations about the different uses of cassettes? I like people that encase them in paper, plastic, metal, wood, paint, etc. What are your favorite cassettes? Cave, tapes that are paved, encased in paper, plastic, metal, wood, paint, etc. Who are you? AMK. What do you do? I run Van Productions. Thank you. Welcome. Rob Wortman. Uh, my affiliations are that I'm alive on this planet and I suppose I'm affiliated with all sorts of things. What do you do with cassettes? How did you get started? Well, I usually put them in a tape recorder and then I put noise on them and then I put them in another tape recorder and play them back. And I got started by uh, Hearing one, I, uh, a friend of mine had one. No, no, I saw an ad in the newspaper. No, it was a magazine. What are the best ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? I think putting noise on them. What are the worst ideas you have heard for using cassettes? Uh, probably putting some other noise on them. Do you have any comments concerning legalities about home taping? Uh, I think it should be legal. Who is outstanding in cassette creations? What have they done? Way too many to name. Don't I think names. everyone should do it. Um, do you have any comments about the technology surrounding cassettes? Uh, not really, no. What are your favorite cassettes? I wouldn't possibly be able to name them. Usually ones that I find somewhere. What's your favorite cassette? Maybe the Sammy tape. Okay. Uh, there you go. My name is Eldon M. I'm currently with a recording project called Allegory Chapel. And I've been playing keyboards with rock and roll bands since 1978. And uh, right now, Allegory Chapel is just a tape project of um, different types of electronic music. What do you do with cassettes? How did you get started? What do I do with cassettes? I just um, take uh, experiments and sounds and try to put them into a song context. And, uh, I just got started by um, hearing other people do it and I decided to try it. What are some of the best ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Uh, imaginative packaging and uh, booklets and uh, just all around good music. What are the worst ideas you've heard for using cassettes? I don't think I can think of any of them. Oh, the, I think the worst is mail is uh, it's just it just makes the cassettes inaccessible to, to people as far as uh, time 
Do you have any comments about legalities regarding um, taping copyright? No, I think everybody should do it. Who is outstanding? Outstanding in the cassette creations. What have they done? Who is outstanding? I think Big City Orchestra because they're so prolific, and they should be, they should serve an example to to all uh, cassette uh, producers. Do you have any comments about the technology surrounding cassettes? I think that technology is accessible to the common person. Uh, we're bringing it into modern times uh, Latremont's adage, or the Surrealist adage, every man a poet, and just transferring that into as far as uh, musical technology. How do people make money with cassettes? Right now, I'm not making any, but um, you gotta get heard, get your music out, send it out to um, people who have uh, dis who are distributors and have their own um, dis cassette or record labels, and um, if they like it, um, contribute to compilations. And, uh, you like the different groups that you work with? All right. Go ahead and do that. I'm Dave Gardner. Okay, these, these are the affiliations for the second time. Um, the zero set or the null set, pretty much the same thing, as well as the Consternation of Pain band project. Anything else that seems likely. The power's just gone out again. It's okay, we can see the questions. And this works on batteries. Okay. That's a good thing too. Okay. okay. What, it's what what do what do I what do you do with cassettes? Is what that... do you do with cassettes? How did you get started? I got started on reel to reel at um, two tracks, but mainly I just record music on cassettes. Sometimes I take cassettes and record music from cassettes. That's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Uh, what are the best ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Burning them, burying them, throwing them out in the street. What are the worst ideas you've heard for using cassettes? What are the worst ideas you've heard for using cassettes? Worst ideas for, for, for using cassettes? Recording anything mediocre. Do you have any comments about legalities regarding home taping? Things like copyright, well, I, I, taping every, right. Everything I do is free to everybody. You can tape as many as you like. Who is outstanding in cassette creations? What do they do? Names. Well, I like what you do, Das. You're not supposed to say that. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, gosh. In cassettes per se, I, I can't really give you any names. I, 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 don't, I don't like to be interviewed, you know. Okay. Do you have any questions regarding the technology of cassettes? Yeah. Yeah, when are, we, when are the digital cassettes coming out? How do people make money with cassettes? Um, they sell a lot of them. They sell a lot of uh, the same stuff as everybody else sells. That's how people make money with them. What is your favorite cassette? A cassette I recorded myself from Easy Listening Records. What is your favorite cassette cover? Clear plastic with nothing written on it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Howard Hosler. I'm 25 years old. I work at uh, Step One Nursery School in uh, Berkeley, and uh, I uh, I'm in a group called Negative Land. What do you do with cassettes? How did you get started? Well, 
I can't, I don't know how to answer that question. Okay. What are some? Oh, no, no, love it. How did I get started with cassettes? Using cassettes. What's your earliest cassette? Oh, oh okay. Uh, um, when I was probably about uh, nine or ten, I discovered, you know, I had two little portable cassette decks, and I would turn, record something on one, and turn that, play that back, and re-record it on the other one, and just sort of bounce back and forth like that, and uh, uh, make some pretty fun stuff. And in fact, one of the first things I ever did doing that that uh, stuff ended up on our the second negative land record, in which is the, what piece was it? I can't remember. Oh, Dear Mary, right. The background screaming and yelling in Dear Mary is actually all of this stuff bounced back and forth on shitty... Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, dear. I said a bad word on uh, crap, uh, lousy cassette. <laughs> all of this music's just overwhelming. Uh, uh, what is the best idea that you have heard for using cassettes? Well, the best stuff that I like the best is uh, David. He just records, my friend David just records his parents all the time in the kitchen. And he sort of has like every Thanksgiving and Christmas they've ever had together is on tape. And then he brings those over and, and puts them on. And, uh, I like I like cassettes for that. What are the worst ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Well, one thing I find annoying with all of the um, a lot of people who have been releasing cassettes of stuff they make, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the very nature of what's so wonderful about cassettes and how easy it is to get the stuff out there, it's also sort of a pitfall because you, uh, it's really easy to say, oh, we, we've got an hour here, oh, we've got 90 minutes here, let's fill it up. And uh, I think uh, it sort of contributes to uh, people not being too uh, critical of what they do. Also, you can take the first thing you've ever made, you know, you go turn on the dishwasher and an electric drill and uh, bang on something and scream and yell with a little echo and you can put it out. Which I guess in a way is really good and in a way just bugs me. Do you have any You're not going to respond to anything. I can't no. have a conversation because not I don't a even conversation. I'm not, even, I'm not answers, even confident in anything that I'm saying. So. I don't know. What does that question mean? Okay. What is your favorite cassette? What do you mean? What is your single favorite? If the well, house started I, on fire, uh, you could grab one cassette. Which one would it, would it be? Well, uh, uh, leadership ship equals sales equals profits. I think that's my my favorite. All time cassette. favorite. Yeah, I really like that one. Okay. I also like um, Lois by the Dave. Is a pretty uh, pretty. Uh, like I said, I, all I ever hear about now are what people send me in the mail or people give me at shows. Occasionally they'll hand me stuff. But other than that, I'm just, I don't know. The, I read the reviews and the independent music stuff, and I kind of go, oh, that sounds really neat. I wonder what that would sound like. But I never get around to ordering it or hearing it, and I don't have enough money to keep up with it. And... Oh, so everyone ends up putting out all these really tapes that I think are just kind of lousy. They sound awful, and, uh, and it's... Uh, I'm probably complaining, uh, and in a way, my complaints are entirely suspect because uh, Negative Land did cassettes for years and years and years, and there was no way to release them or anything. And I'm glad there wasn't because that way we were able to uh, we were able to go through a lot of uh, really bad ideas and work on a lot of things, so that by the time we did our first record, it was there was some vaguely developed sense that we of something or other that we had of what we were doing. So I guess it's great that everyone can put out tapes and make lots of noise and, and do their thing, but uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't make it very interesting. Uh, most of it's not very interesting to listen to. That's my thoroughly negative opinion. I'm sorry. Usually I'm much more positive than this. Okay, I'm Brooke Hinton, and my affiliations are with the Subelectric Institute, a tape label, and another umbrella corporation, a thing, I don't know, and uh, different bands, Four Track Mind and King's House, and I do my own solo tapes, and that's, that's that. What do I do with cassettes? How did I get started? Well, it was just sort of the logical way to release the 
the stuff that I was doing because I couldn't afford to put out records and I never listened to them anyway. I always listened to tapes. What are some of the best ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Uh, I like the idea that, of releasing cassette loops, which is something the AMKs talked about doing. Um, oh gosh, I don't know, I just like cassettes. Uh, there are lots of good ideas for them, I can't really name you any specific ones. Okay, what are some of the worst ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Demo tapes. Do you have any comments about legalities regarding home taping? Um, well, we put on a lot of our tapes, all rights reversed, meaning that for personal use, people should be able to do whatever they want, and even to a limited extent for trading, and uh, I don't think it really hurts people if people are trading tapes and copying other people's tapes. Uh, I don't know, that's basically it. I think there should be no legal restrictions on home taping of any kind. Who is outstanding in cassette creations, and what have they done? Who's outstanding in cassette creations? Uh, oh, I can think of a lot of people that I like a lot, like Minoy, who's released a huge number of tapes which are consistently very interesting. Um, Big City Orchestra is one of my personal favorite cassette artists. Uh, there's a lot of people doing interesting things, so again, and off the top of my head, maybe really amazing examples. Do you have any observations on ways of getting cassettes available to other parts of the world? Ways of getting cassettes available to other parts of the world? You should mail them. Okay. Do you have any comments about the technology surrounding cassettes? Yeah, I think cassettes are, they are not an inferior technology. They can sound as good as records. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm actually with, uh, What's the story when you record it with Dolby C? Yeah. <laughs> Dolby C is a wonderful thing. It makes, I mean, it's got a better signal to noise ratio than an album. Uh, most home tapes don't sound as good as records, not because they're on the set, but because they're done on home equipment. I think it's a, also a better technology in that it's more democratic. There's no mystique about mastering and pressing a record, and anybody with a couple of cassette decks can produce something interesting if they're talented. How do people make money with cassettes? They don't. <laughs> What are your favorite cassettes, and what are your favorite cassette covers? Uh, my favorite cassette of all time is Lois by the Dave, and I don't have any favorite cassette covers. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Del Heft. I'm the, I'm the vocalist for the Ice Plants, and I'm responsible for the lyrics, good, bad, or indifferent. Well, we ran a disclaimer, so it oh, should be okay, okay anyway. So, what, the rest of them are breaking down? You gonna play some more, or...? Um, no, I don't think so. No, you don't think so? Mm -hmm. Okay. I pretty much... Charge that. Right now, yeah. Okay. You mean, what do you do with cassettes? <clears throat> How did you get started? With cassettes? Um... It's, uh... It's a cheap easy, convenient way to get out some music that probably does not have a lot of commercial potential, or may, um, and to document it and make it available to whoever's interested, although there, there's a lot of work involved in finding those people, seeking them out. There's a few people that will seek out anything but in order to find a larger audience, even a larger small audience, um, it, it requires a lot of digging to try to find those people. As far as an observation about cassettes, I think that it's absolutely wonderful. I think probably 75% um, of the good music coming out right now that, that is creative is coming out on cassette and very possibly cassette only releases. What are your favorite cassettes? My favorite cassettes? That's pretty difficult. 
there's some good uh, compilations coming out of England on A Man's Hate. They're, they're 90 minute compilations. They're, the price is good, the price is cheap. I think the price should be kept as low as possible on cassettes because nobody's gonna make any money off it anyway. You might as well get as many people to hear it as possible. But Man's Hate does some good stuff. I, I have traded tapes with some people that there may only be 10 or 15 copies in, exi in existence. I think some of that stuff is really good and is definitely good enough to reach a larger audience. But then again, maybe it's, it's possibly better than it doesn't. Who is outstanding in their creations with the cassette as far as packaging? Packaging? There's some really good ones. There's some really incredible ones. Um, I don't really know if I could name names right now. But there's a lot of good ones, believe me. <laughs> Do you have any comments about legalities regarding home taping? Comments. Well, we're we're active um, in one aspect that concerns the legality around it, and that's this ridiculous um, tax that they're trying to put on cassettes. I think that it's absolutely ridiculous. It's a uh, pure example of the, the bullshit that you get from the major labels. They're making plenty of money, and they're just trying to figure out a way to make more. They're obviously and blatantly just... It's a threat to them because it's being done and they fear that it's going to reach a larger audience. The technology is now available that people can do this cheaply, inexpensively. That is very dangerous to the major, uh, to the major companies. And they're gonna do everything they can to stop it and they're trying. I'm Rick Corrigan, uh, I'm uh, from Boulder. I play with the dog parts. What do you do with cassettes? How did you get started? Um, I got started in cassettes about probably about uh, five years ago. Um, just having certain, you know, cassettes come into my hands through friends, etc., of music that I uh, hadn't been aware of, and I found very exciting. And uh, started actually contributing for compilations um, in about 1983. Um, actually, we put some, the Architect's Office put together some music um, for Third Mind, uh, which actually was not released by them, but uh, kind of started the ball, ball rolling for us, and we've been producing music ever since then. What are the best ideas you've heard for using cassettes? Uh, well, s storage of certain material, for example, uh, Soviet France has a cassette release that you probably know of that uh, contains a feather from the North Sea, which is the most radioactive body of water in the world. <laughs> anyway, it seems, a, it seems a good means of getting certain kinds of information out. <laughs> Who is outstanding in cassette creations? What have they done? Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, uh, let me pass on that one for a while and think about it. Okay. Do you have any comments about the technology surrounding cassettes? Uh, I love it. I, I mean, uh, uh, it's uh, you can get cassettes that range in quality from some what would be considered poor sound to extremely high quality sound and yet there's a certain uh, balance in all of it to to where the you know the ideas on on a cassette come through a lot more than the quality of the sound <laughs> uh, actually there's a lot of people's work that i admire a lot big city orchestra being one of them um some other groups on the west coast that i like uh we'll take that off the mic in a minute <laughs> Haters, uh, I, I really like uh, a lot of the Thessalonians' work, and um, actually, there's a quite a lot of work. It's hard to pinpoint.
Um, while I've got this going in the background, I'm going to ask Gerald some uh, audio alchemy questions concerning cassettes. And uh, this will get mixed down in some silly fashion like... I'm ready. Okay. What do you do with cassettes? How did you get started? What do I do with cassettes? I bulk erase the ones I don't like. How did you get started? Someone showed me what a bulk eraser was. No, how did you get started making cassettes? People just uh, sent them to me. People just sent me these cassettes and I, I just sent cassettes back. What are some of the best ideas that you have heard for using cassettes? Um, I could say something really cute like... Uh, I don't know, a way of storing blank tape comes to mind. That's the only thing I can do. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you. What are the best... Oh, ooh, that was the best. What are the worst ideas for using cassettes? What's the worst idea? Violence in the sacred. Violence in the sacred, yeah. I'll make sure I put this on. Uh, do you have any comments about legalities regarding home taping? Yeah, I think people should tape whatever they they feel like. Okay, and it doesn't matter what it is, people should just tape whatever they want. And then network if they want, or keep copies, make copies for friends, makes no difference. Who is outstanding in cassette creations? What have they done? Um, AMK does great packaging. That's because he kicked me before, that's fine. <laughs> oh, no, he does. He, he gives good packaging. Do you have any comments about the technology surrounding cassettes? I don't care. I don't care if it's high tech or low tech. Anything. Anything goes. It's all rock and roll. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It's all cool. It's all here. It's all now. And what are your very favorite cassettes? Anything by MB and anything by Merspa. And what are your very favorite cassette covers? The next. The next. No, I, I, I don't have any. I really don't. Okay. How would you define networking in the context of our subject? You send a cassette to one person and he sends a cassette back to you. And then they play it on each other's radio show. And, and they, they make it. And then they bulk erase <laughs> it and use it for something better. Yeah. How do people make money with cassettes? I haven't, I haven't got the foggiest notion. I guess sell them to people who, who want to do it's cassette so networking. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any observations about the different uses of cassettes and making them available to interested persons in different parts of the world? That's such a long question, I forgot the beginning. Do you have any observations about no. the different uses of cassettes? Some people are better at it than others. Okay, and how about making them available to other places and parts of the world? Um, I... Well, gee, that's such a... Uh, you just, you just send them to anyone. Just send them to an address. You don't uh, just make up an address and just don't put a return address on the outside of the cover hoping that it will actually get somewhere. The poor and the rich, the young and the old, be smeared with guiltless gore. I mustn't panic. No time for regrets. The Congress once more. Rebellion. The awful realization of it assails us. Who is to command us all? Name does not matter. I have my misgivings, little experience. There's no sleep for us. All is chaos. But it's better than we dared hope. They slaves to buy their freedom with army pay. Our insubordinate, undisciplined New Englanders are beginning to obey orders. We're true rebels now. All of us here and in Congress walk daily in the shadow of the hangman. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of those ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government. We can expect the utter destruction of our cities, invasion of all our homes. Savages turned loose on our frontiers. But we have more than our lives or our property to fight for now.
This is Doss. Thank you all for uh, staying with us this long. I had a few comments about cassettes I wanted to make myself before we uh, end this latest cassette mythos. Audio Alchemy. Concerning the technology and the legalities, we should all be pushing right now for the uh, DAC or the DAT digital audio tape. Show is starting up. Life support systems functional. You want to, right. you want to I turn think on the we can begin to broadcast. Oh, we're already oh, broadcasting. Primary and secondary circuit test commencing now. Oh, yes, dear nice friends. Nice green lights across the board. Yes, the show is warming up. Yes, and you can see your radio light up. And if you look inside the speakers real close, you may be able to see the picture. Free departure check sequence complete. Thank you. Lines are open. All right. Energize the caller, please. Ah, yes, dear friends. Welcome to the Subgenius Radio Ministry Hour of Slack. Praise Bob. Praise Bob. And we'll be orbiting your area for the next hour, carrying the message, the seed word of the faith of Bob, the faith in Bob, F-I-B, we call it. Can you keep up the F-I-B? You want to dump the main shunts? Thank you. All right. Okay. Somewhere show is uh, shows right up on the green lines, Doctor. Okay. Show is fully on the line. We will be landing on another show. We will be docking with another show tonight. Pardon me. You you can't land on another show that would cause a nuclear explosion. We'll be docking with show four from San Francisco tonight, and. Uh, Oh, uh, hold on to your seats and be- Oh, shit! The pin! The pin! I'm, uh, <clears throat> gonna go down to the store here and see if uh, it's still open. Give myself a bag of pretzels, maybe. Thought I'd take you along for the ride. Maybe take you walk for a walk later on too. Uh, let's see. Thought I'd uh, use this tape, this cassette, to uh, answer the interview questions that you sent. And just kind of give you a sonic hello, too. Uh, so I'm sure this is going to be kind of spacey and disjointed. And other interesting things might happen, too. Like, uh... Like what? Well, like... The battery might run down, which, uh... Has a tendency to make my voice raise an octave because the tape slows down. That could be interesting. Uh, but hopefully that won't happen. Uh, 
Ah, oh, darn. Ah, I'm supposed to replace my radiator cap. I guess I should do that later. Let's see. Okay, your questions here as we're driving along. What's your earliest memory of using cassettes? What do you do with them now? How'd you get started? Be Gabby. Let's see what we can do to fill that bill. Uh, actually, as far as me, it's uh, maybe more appropriate to ask what's my earliest memory of using tape, period. I can remember when I was a kid, we used to go on these uh, vacations, summer vacations across the country. And uh, it was really kind of fascinating, saw a lot of beautiful places, but at the same time, for a kid my age at the time, pre-teens, it was really kind of boring at times. And so my, my dad was looking to buy some property, which eventually we moved out here, and he bought this little Panasonic portable to uh, record his kind of dictation, narration, uh, when he was looking at real estate. So it had like these little mini reels of reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape, four inch reels or something. Anyway, I glommed onto that baby pretty quick. Look out, dog. And uh, Recorded everything in my record collection for the summer. You know, all the Rolling Stones and the Paul Brummels and the Jefferson Airplane, 24 Greatest Hits, all that stuff. And put it on all these tapes, you know, and if you record it at really slow speed, you get 1800 feet. You record it at, uh, what is it, 1 and 7 eighths IPS. Uh, you know, you could get like uh, 10 albums on there sometimes. Plus the thing was battery operated, just slap, I think it was four D cells in there or something, and you carry it all over the place. So like this predates rock boxes and ghetto blasters by years. Uh, but that's basically what I did, towed it all over the country. Everywhere I went, that thing was just banging it out. Uh, and and that, that experience basically launched me on my demented audio career and made me what I am today. See if the store's open. Yep. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is Chuck. 911 Lexington Avenue, number two, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27403. This is Chuck. 911 Lexington Avenue, number two, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27403. Our phone number, area code 919-282-3307. This is Chuck. 911 Lexington Avenue, number two, Greensboro, North Carolina. 27403. This is Chuck. 911. Lexington Avenue, number 2. Greensboro, North Carolina. 27403. This is Chuck. Pretty hard to find any good drugs. No, no, no. And it's what I want to talk to you about this evening. I am honest, convincing, and highly erroneous. Let's face it, my mind has an deteriorated, deteriorated in its implement implementation. This led to my failure. Much has been said about my management style. So I can tell you, I've put in long hours for the nation's benefit, creating troubles or tragedies, sketchy reports, erroneous statements, thousands of documents, secret bank accounts, and diverted funds, so that notes can be available to me on a continuing basis. I've just made a discovery. I can tell that one of the batteries in one of my microphones is stronger than the other by the strength of the levels. I'm, this is the first time I've actually made an audio cassette letter. I'm, uh, I think it's a great idea. You could tell a lot 
about the person and there are different ways they communicate and hearing a person says a lot about them it's finally happened past normal is done and completed and not quite yet past we're still uh, working on getting distribution and all the activities that go into it including sending it out for all the promo copies and everyone who's on it gets a copy and uh, I'm glad that I'm finally able to send you your copy I've received the box set of Cassette Mythos I think it's great I've shared it with several people most of whom don't share all my enthusiasm for it but I'm glad that I have a box I also think that the quality from the additional generation that that you have and then the one more generation for the the copies of cassette mythos is still very good and I'm I'm happy to see that I think that's because of all the little differences that we st try to to do when we recorded it that didn't think would really make a difference but considering the the amount of generation and duplication that's gone through it it still sounds fresh Probably, uh, I remember that my dad, when I was about eight years old, bought some really bad cassette recorder thing, kind of, kind of like the the predecessor of a of a ghetto blaster. Um, and it was probably terribly expensive and it, really bad quality and. <laughs> Uh, I used to set up the the two microphones because it, they didn't make single stereo microphones yet. They had one for each channel. And I used to put them in front of the speakers of the stereo and record my records that way. Um, and that they sounded bad. <laughs> This is um, Dan Plunkett from um, Austin, Texas, um, the one that does ND magazine. But I, ND7 was a cassette tape, and um, what I sort of wanted to do that wanted to do with that was make it a magazine on t on tape, um, and maybe feature interviews and have different people on it. Uh, but as I got into it more and more, I didn't want to really talk on the tape or present a package, so it mainly just came out like a compilation. And uh, anyway, that's how it came out. 
and um, then with um, then with um, Carl Howard, uh, we put out the um, AAND tape, uh, and that was just a project to to work together with somebody else on. So um, I did a side, and he did a side, and that's how it came about. And um, anyway, it's interesting anyway. And myself, I like compilation tapes, um, even though some groups are featured on just as about as many as they can get on. But you know, it's it's still a good forum to hear new people and new uh, new ideas, and that's always the incentive for me to to get them. Um, do you have any comments about legalities regarding home taping? Mm, no, I don't have. Um, I'm also not afraid to copy things which exist already in a uh, uh, limited or no limited yes limited edition or a special edition. Um, I'm not afraid because my works are not commercial. It is just for me. Also, uh, exchanging tapes and cassettes with other people, with other friends, with other sound uh, artists. So my collection is very big, and uh, I don't sell and I don't buy, but uh, I will exchange also my own edition. Um, uh, is thinking permanent of these rules. I make copies of all participants and the and the the the, the uh, no, and what what they get uh, for participating is just the cassette of the whole collection.
Today's young composers are casting aside the old rules for making music and inventing new kinds of sonic experience for today's listeners. And in a world of instant creation and communication, any sound, any music, and any instrument is fair game for fresh invention. That's right, John. Uh, pioneering. Yes, you are here. What are you hearing? Mirages? Hello. Mystery Tapes, les bandes mystérieuses, est heureux de vous présenter cette démonstration pour vous, public incroyable. Votre hôte ou hôtesse est un représentant spécialisé du laboratoire Mystery Tape, un des garçons et filles avec grandes oreilles, travaillant au lab sur des projets excitants dans le domaine du bruit, entre autres macrophonie, métamusique, audiocartographie, plunderphonie, les fictions de bruit, le silence, l'imprimerie des sons et, bien sûr, de réputation mondiale, la série des bandes X variées d'informations secrètes. De toute façon, il est beaucoup plus facile d'écouter un mystery tape que de le décrire. Le concept de chasser et de modeler, de posséder avec obsession pour fréquenter illégalement la clique, une multitude de sons essentiels, plein de vitalité de partout et de n'importe quand, pour les amalgamer dans un pêle-mêle de séquences et d'entrecroisements, de symphonies, de cacophonies, de bandes dessinées, de réalités, dont le format est typiquement byzantin. Mystery tapes sont disponibles seulement par courrier, et seulement du laboratoire Mystery Tape. De cette façon, nous pouvons garder en filière votre identité, et ainsi nous pourrons mieux desservir vos désirs audiophoniques. Pour découvrir le mystère des Mystery Tape, vous pouvez obtenir un exemplaire pour seulement 3 dollars. Envoyez votre argent à Mystery Tape Laboratoire. Boîte postale 727, station P, Toronto, Ontario. Code postal M5S2Z1. En plus d'obtenir une cassette de haute fidélité, vous recevrez gratuitement une brochure illustrée comprenant la liste des bandes disponibles. Prenez note de l'adresse. Mystery Tape. Laboratoire, boîte postale 727, station P, Toronto, Ontario, M5S2Z1. Spores again, formed and traced. By Bill Burroughs. So unspeakably uh, distasteful, bad. Slup, I mean, uh, slup, things his way. <clears throat> slup, I mean, really. <clears throat> uh, Mickey's skin. I won't say anything. Tympicus. Cupido. Mrs. Helena Schultz. Yes. The fossil lady. You don't see very many dead animals lying around. And the people. What is the people? And the people. What is Verso mean? Verso spores feature jazz, rock, angst. Film, reptilian sex, um, hmm, ordered spores, ordered spores, uh, ordered spores today and or fresh mousses. 
God, Henry Kaiser. Oh, oh, and Tashinori Kondo. Along with himself, also representing the true to life alto sax. Distractive notes and photos inclusive. So, uh, yes, Doug Wellman. The coyote goes. Dictum, but just to make sure. Yeah, mm, that's. No, I still don't like it. Make it variations. Make it da capo. Or da segno. Or da capo aria. No. I don't like it, no. No, d make it chromatic. Yeah. No, no, st no, cut, cut. That's it's just not right. I I don't like it at all. Make it recitative. Hmm. No, I don't like it. Uh, no, 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 stop, stop. Now, friends, I I gotta talk. This is the uh, swinging love corpses running in the background here. And uh, I need to I need to uh. Great, this is a project I'm working on, personally, but I need help. I need the help from, from y'all. And that's help with drugs, dear friends. I need help with drugs. Uh, together, a book. I, I just finished my second book, so this is for real. I want to put together a book of uh, collected bad trip anecdotes, dear friends, uh, in your own words, or your friend's own words. Uh, I guess the uh, only uh, logical...